do you think I was unfaithful? Vice versa. Spin it around. No, I'm never, really never going to make me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever? Woo! <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> have you ever slept through something really important? Uh, or something. This doesn't even have to be important. Well, it could be important, but like something that was like kind of meaningful in your life. No, the closest I can get was I remember one time um, calling my brother Gary for whatever reason on a Saturday morning. And I go, hey, Gary, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm watching the space shuttle uh, disintegrate in the atmosphere when it was coming back. And I'm like, oh, my God. And, and I had to turn Wait, on the when TV. Was this? Years ago. Uh, I don't remember. It wasn't. Uh, this wasn't the Challenger. No. <laughs> God, which one was it that uh, disintegrated? So I don't look like a total idiot. I have to actually Google this because I can't remember now. Okay, while you Google this, I, I have to tell you this. So a girlfriend of mine was going on vacation and she got an upgrade to first class. Yeah. And it happens once in a blue. She had never been in first class, but unfortunately she was so tired because like, you know how you just don't sleep really well yeah. the night before you're packing. So she gets upgraded to first class. She falls asleep during the entire first class experience. No. Yes. She said she woke up to the woman next to her finishing up some sort of like luscious looking Belgian waffle with strawberries. <laughs> and she got nothing. And she got nothing. And she goes, I <laughs> slept through my first class experience. That's awesome. I mean, that's Not horrible. Awesome. No, it's terrible. It's it, terrible. It was the worst. I'm like, girl, I'm so sorry. I said, you got to, you got to get back in first class somehow. Did She's, she at least pound a bunch of drinks when, you know, she woke up? She's like, I'll take four. <laughs> no, she said that was pretty much the end of the flight. And that uh, was it. She literally slept through the entire thing. Like, girl needed a nap. <laughs> I know. Uh, I I think the next time she ever gets in first class is when she finds a sugar daddy. Yeah, because, you know, I've only flown first class one time. I was on an interview to a radio station in uh, Nashville. Oh, and they flew you first class? Uh, no, I got a uh, upgrade. You got a bump. I, I got a bump. I, I, <gasps> I wasn't even dressed that nice. Like I had, I threw on a pair of khakis because I'm like, well, I got to fly. And I had like a kind of a button down shirt type thing. Kind of like today. A little bit. And uh, mm -hmm. big change. And yeah. Um, yeah, this is years ago. This is when I was living in Cleveland, I think. Yes, I was. And uh uh, took a flight and they go, hey, would you like to go first class? I'm like, yeah. no, I don't want any of that hoity-toity shit. Thank you. No, of course I did. Yeah. And you didn't get the job. Uh, no, I was offered the job, but they, as soon as they told me things like uh, uh, there was you're no- You're going to wear many hats. Yes, you're going to wear many hats. <laughs> uh, you're a rock star. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, that and uh, they, they offered no health insurance. They go, but we'll take care of you. I'm like, what? bullshit. <laughs> so, they didn't offer health insurance? No, no. It was uh, it was really, uh, you know, it was a, uh, as I went through. Oh, and I'll never forget the operations manager- I know his name, but I'm not going to say it because, you know, that's just a rude thing to do in our industry of broadcasting. There's only a handful of people that deserve ever a name mentioned for good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I'll never forget this guy. He took me to his apartment because he had to go get something. Okay. And he goes... Well, don't, don't, and his apartment was not that great. Like, honest to God, I, you know, I had a house in Cleveland. I'm like, uh-huh. He goes, don't, don't uh, look at this apartment and think to yourself that you're going to get something this nice. I'm not going to pay you that much. I'm like, ha, 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 take me to the airport, you dick. Oh, I definitely would yeah. not have taken that job. Although Nashville's such a great city. Yeah. Living there, I think would be great, especially because it's like the bachelorette uh, party capital of the world. So lots of I don't know if it was back in that day. Back in the in the I was somewhere in the nineties, I think. Oh God, yeah. I don't remember when this was exactly. I know it was years ago though. Well, still. I obviously you're here for a reason. Well, and uh, yes, and <laughs> I've joked many times, no one else will have us, but that's here nor there. Oh. Um, so I, I yeah, oh, the Columbia, by the way. I had to Google it because I I was I knew oh. Challenger was the one that exploded. Uh, upon liftoff. Remember mm -hmm. that one? That was back. Yes. I think it was in my last year of middle school, getting ready to enter high school. In 86, I think? Yeah, I think so. And uh, I remember that vividly. I was walking down the hall from the bathroom and the principal came over the uh, speaker. And I, actually, if I remember correctly, directed all the students back to their rooms for the teachers to make an announcement to the mm -hmm. kids. But, the, but you had said slept through it. It was technically not a slept through, but I remember calling my brother and I was 
just totally not aware this was happening. And he goes, oh, yeah, I'm watching Columbia disintegrate upon reentry. And I'm like, what? And yeah, then By I the way, I bet you your teacher had you watch TV that day, right? I think so. That's what we always did. Whenever there was something big that happened, yeah. if it was like like 9-11 or what have you. Ooh, did we, they make you watch 9-11? We were watching. We didn't know what was going on. So, yes, we were watching it for a little bit. I was actually in my freshman year of college. Okay. Oh. So we turned on the TV yeah. and we're like, what's happening? We had no clue what was happening. So we didn't really know what was going on for long. We were in there for maybe a half hour, yeah. and then they just missed us. Okay. The whole campus. It was very weird. Oh, everything let out that day. It was yeah. not. And it, you were, you went to school in Columbus, right? Uh, at this point, I was in Cleveland still. Oh, you were in Cleveland. Well, remember that one plane in 9-11 flew over Cleveland, turned around, the one that crashed in Pennsylvania. Oh, I don't know. You don't remember that? No. Well, see, this was different for me because I was literally on the air for like 12 hours that day in North Carolina outside Fort Bragg, which went on immediate lockdown. And um, I remember that vividly because one of the reports that had come in was the the plane uh, was... Uh, this I'm sure it was the one that crashed in Pennsylvania. It, it turned around right over Cleveland. Oh, I never knew that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look that one up. That's quite the... Uh, you start... Not, not that I want to take us down a weird path with this here, too, but, uh, it, you know, and spend too much time on this. But if you start looking at some of the facts that have come out, you know, 22 mm-hmm. years later yeah. from 9-11, you start seeing things going, wow, I really, I was unaware. Yeah. I had no idea. When every time, like, the anniversaries always come up, you always get that deluge of mm. documentaries on Hulu and Netflix. And so you do. You end up, like, catching things that you just never knew the first time around. Do the Wikipedia of the timeline of it, and that'll go quicker for you to uh, find out. Because I think it was around noon or something. No, it was not noon. It was earlier than that that the plane turned around over Cleveland. It must have been in the 9 o'clock area. 9 or 10, somewhere around there, yeah. It was. It, it's crazy. Yeah, because I think the first plane was in the 9... It was, I believe. Well, at any rate, you, yeah. you guys go spend the time figuring that out. Clearly, our history is off a little bit today. I couldn't remember Columbia for whatever reason, but... Um, no, I, I don't remember that one at all. Oh, check it out. It's really very interesting. Shall we lighten this totally up for you? Yes. Okay. I have a couple things that I want to go over. I'm going to I'm gonna start with... Let's do a game. Okay. Okay. And then I have a question for you. If we have time... Okay. I have something about breakups that I want to ask you, and it could turn into something a little bit longer. If we don't have time on this podcast, I will save it for the next one because didn't you ask, do you want an exit interview after a breakup on either the show or the podcast? Yeah, I can't remember which one it was, but yes. Uh Well, I have your questions. Oh, okay. I legitimately have your questions. Okay. Um, So if we get to it today, God, I hope so. We'll do it. If we don't get to it today, we will do it, I promise, on the next one, okay? okay? Now, you were a waitress many years ago. I mean, let's face it. We all didn't become successful immediately. Well, all right, Allie, a little quicker than me. I loved my waitressing days. Okay. It was one of my favorite times. And I feel like now, and I was talking about this with my mom the other day, it is very evident that I was a waitress. How I treat people Mm -hmm. is very evident. My brother was never in the service industry. And how he treats people is very... (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I mean, I, you're not that far off, well, my friend. I know, but I'm just teasing. You're it. empathetic and sympathetic. Empathetic and sympathetic when you are in the service industry. Yeah, there's truth to that. I know I agree with that. Uh, were you a restaurant where you wrote things down uh, when you were taking an order? Yes. Okay. You've been to restaurants where they don't write it down. Like, they actually yeah. do. Are you ever amazed or are ever you are you ever prepared? They are going to royally screw up my meal somehow. Does it go through your mind? No, because... Okay, I got to know the answer for this because somebody was telling me, they go, it really annoys me when the waiter or waitress does not write down the order. I was one who never wrote down the order. You didn't? I, no, and I rarely, rarely screwed up. I And people would even look at me and go... Do you want to write this down? I go, and so I would say, You look kind of stupid. Do you want to write it down? (laughs) No, I would say, No, but I'd repeat them their order and they'd go, Okay, all right. And that's why if you are, if you're that capable, rock it. Okay. I'm I'm very impressed because I will tell you, I related to what the person said when they said, I, I, I get nervous when they don't write it down because you think like, did you ever have to write down like a very specific thing? Like if somebody's like, look, I cannot have this. It's very important. Or did you know? Um. Well, one time I really screwed up. All right. When <laughs> I 
this is one of those few times. And I think this is why it always sticks with me and why I think that I was very confident in myself. And I tried to make sure that never happened ever again. I'm sure I made a mistake at some point. But uh, the person was, I don't know what country they were from, but they were clearly Middle Eastern. Mm. And they couldn't eat chicken. Okay. They were vegetarian for, I believe it was like some religious thing. They made a big deal about it, which I understand. Well, I forgot to hit vegetarian button oh. on the, yes. So yeah. then when she came back, I'm not going to lie. I did not treat the situation very well. I lied. And I said, I hit the button. The chefs didn't do it right. Blah, blah, blah. Even my boss was like, what happened? So I was like, yeah, I guess Tony hmm. messed up in the back. Oh, wow. And I complained. Tony. And, he, and he, he totally believed me because I never messed up. And so now I feel bad because that's a lie that I've carried for how many years? Oh, it's out now. So, so she, good for you. So she ate chicken even though she religiously wasn't supposed to. She ate it thinking it was some vegetarian option? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, she knew. She there's no there's no vegetarian chicken or any kind of fake chicken that you don't know and especially if this was back in the early 2000s, they didn't have this stuff yet. It, it wasn't was, like the veggie burger where you're like, you know, no, this is kind of close. It was it was a tossed salad with like chicken chunks in there yeah yeah she and knew she took a bite of what she said she didn't know it was a chunk of chicken yeah she knew don't okay. feel bad she knew yeah I there's no way i feel bad chicken has day. a distinct flavor yes. uh chicken Smell? has a, d a distinct texture yes uh th and if she well, yeah, she said she knew after the bite of course oh so wait a minute she only took she didn't eat the whole salad with the no. chicken it was just one bite uh, one or two, I assume. I don't know. Uh, all right. Well, then, you know what? Well, I guess if it's do whatever your religion says you have to do to, for penance because it was an accidental bite. I know, but I still feel so bad about that. Okay. Well, I, again, that's a mistake that just happens. I mean, things. Especially because of her religious. Yeah, upbringing. no, I know, but you didn't do it deliberately, did no, you? No, no, okay. no, not at all. No, then that's but to fine. the lady at Buca de Beppo in 2000. <laughs> it's always a Buca story. What was it? 2000. <laughs> Four, five, yeah. 2005, 2005. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, I'll forgive you. In a minute, we're going to play a game, okay? Okay. I don't know if you know this or not, but Junior, my Shih Tzu Lasso Apso, he's a rescue. And that's why I love and believe wholeheartedly in the Shimon County SPCA. There's just so much love to give. There's so many doggies and kitties who need a good home. But did you know the Shimon County SPCA does way more than that? They do spay and neuter clinics vaccination clinics they even have a pet food pantry what this is is say for instance you get a little down and out on your luck and you don't have enough money to feed your dog or cat you can go to them and they will give you puppy or kitty food i should say dog or cat food and they will give you some food and some treats to get you through it's it's equal love that's what it is the other thing that's great is we as a community are always so helpful with each other sometimes there's things that the spca needs it might be bleach or blankets or washcloths. Follow them on social, Shimon County SPCA, because there might be something that you can give because you never know. It might need to come back to you. Either which way, follow them on social. And uh, next time you need a dog or cat because you need some extra love in your life, well, hit up the Shimon County SPCA. Usually I say no pain, no gain, but not in this case. Oh my gosh, my booty was hurting. I have been talking about this for months. My sciatic nerve has just been on fire and I couldn't figure out, well, how do I fix this? And that's when I discovered Horsehead's acupuncture and decided I'm going to give it a try. I didn't even feel the needles whatsoever. Now you might not have sciatic issues, but if you have muscle pain, anxiety, even depression, acupuncture can treat all of that. If this is speaking to you and you want to give acupuncture a try, then text the word ACU, AC you to the number you know so well, 71231, to see how you can get a discount on your first treatment, whether it's acupuncture, cupping, or massage. Robert from Horsehead's Acupuncture spent about two hours with me, not only going over my treatment, cupping, and massage. He was ready to get to the root of the problem. If that's how you are feeling right now, you just want to get to the root of the problem, then try Horsehead's Acupuncture right in Hanover Square and text the word ACU, A-C-U, to 71231. Another question I wanted to ask you on this podcast. I have things that are going to have to move to next week. Okay. There's no getting around it. I mean, that's why people come back. Well, that's true. Uh, all right. <laughs> so we're going to play a little game here, and you're going to you're going to have seconds to answer this. This is called "Give Us the Wrong Answer." Okay. All you can do is answer wrong. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. What does the E in Chuck E. Cheese stand for? 
Edward. Very good. What three products do you use to keep yourself clean? Uh, dirt, Vaseline, and coffee. Vaseline. <laughs> wow. Uh, how do you find out what a woman or man is mad about? Uh, by yelling at them. Excellent. Where do you do your laundry? Uh, in the toilet. What do you eat soup with? A fork. Where do you shop for food? Uh, Say the SPCA. The SPCA. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I didn't mean it like an animal. I meant oh, like dog food. Uh, oh, your mind went there. I didn't mean that. I was going to say the road. The road. Oh, <laughs> oh, but there are people that do. Is that really a wrong answer? <laughs> we'll let it go. Uh, what do you usually do in the bathroom? Uh, I wash my dishes. God, I thought you were going to say masturbate, and I was going to say me too. <laughs> <laughs> then it wouldn't be a wrong answer, Scott. <laughs> Where do you sleep? Uh, in the bathroom, bathtub. Where? Why is everything in the bathroom today? I don't know where. What, what do you wear to school? Uh, <laughs> I wear a nightshirt. And a girl. Uh, where do you keep your savings? In my left shoe. Okay, you pass. <laughs> you got through all of the wrong answers. Oh my God. I, it was stupid. It was just something to set a mood. Can we do the exit interview thing? <laughs> all right. If you want to do the exit interview, I will. because Or I have this question, too. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, we, we, we have some time left. So let's do the exit interview. Yeah, you, you okay. already teased me with it. Okay. All right. We'll do the exit interview. So Scott's here's preparing for the interview. I, yeah. I was like, mm, 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 You have no mm, idea mm, mm, how much I'm preparing for the interview. And who am I exiting? Or who's exiting? It doesn't matter who it is it's it's an exit interview of a relationship i know but that's what i wanted to know is it like if i was to give it to my current zach or is it i think well if you broke up yes or do i think of an ex and give those answers for the ex this is more of an immediate this is more okay. of you guys just broke up. Right. And, Zach and, and I just broke up. Got yeah, it. Wow. You, maybe you should not say that because people are going to see this and be like, <laughs> and you know how people listen. They're like, oh my God, Allie and Zach broke up. No, they didn't. It's just she's using if it as an did. example. Okay, yes. got it. All right. So these are questions to ask your ex. Uh, and now, some you might want to spend a few more seconds on than others. And, and we'll find out where this goes. Okay. Can you give me the full truth? And I'm going to tell you, I don't believe you'll ever get it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> how about this for your exit interview? Do you listen? Can I, so I would be asking Zach or Zach would be asking me either one. Asking, I oh can ask God. you. You can ask me. Will you ever get the full truth? I am going to be 99% truthful because we've had some serious discussions. Okay. Before, so he knows how I feel about certain things. I don't believe I'll ever get the full truth. I really don't. Oh, okay. I, I, I just don't. Uh, that is because I'll tell you why. You're an eternal optimist, and people want to keep you that way. Okay, thanks for protecting my feelings, I guess. Uh, it's when, true. When were we... And, and also because, well, this is now, that, now I'm having an excellent interview with you. Because you always, uh, because you're an eternal optimist, that even if I tell you the truth, you're going to spin it in whatever way you want to. Okay, I, I guess I can live with that answer. Yes. When were we done in your mind? Do you think you'll get the oh honest my God. answer? I can't even answer this for Zach then. I'm not asking oh. <laughs> you to answer the questions. I'm asking you, do you like the questions? Do you think you oh. will get the answer that you're looking for or not? Or do you really want to know? I Those are the I was things. Supposed to be answering these no. questions. No. Okay. No. 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 Oh. This is if you broke up. These are questions to ask because love when, this question and yes because then then they're gonna really even though I know that they're going to go wait a second we've been done for that long. They will, I will tell them a distinct time. Like it was when we were on that vacation to New York city uh, on the top of the empire state building. Uh -huh. And you, you give them the actual and date you, and you, right. And you didn't propose on February 14th of 2022. Got it. Yep. I've been told actual dates. Yes. Uh, how did you know this wasn't going to work? Maybe it's too close to some other ones. Maybe that's one you skip. Do you really want to know? Yeah, I, I want you to, you want to know why? I want but you're you not going to gonna change. You're going to pretty, I mean, you'll change no, a little bit. No, and I know bit. you won't either. A little bit. Everyone evolves a little bit, but are you going to really hardcore change? I, I don't know. I, I mean, don't think so, because I'll tell you what, I had an ex that I broke up with, and later on, and he treated me a certain way, and later on, I had another friend was like, Allie, leopards don't change their spots that hmm. much. He treats this person that way too. And I will it, say this, if someone's labeling you something you're not, also something that might have happened in my life more than once, or at least once for sure. Um, it's not 
necessarily who I am. It's the question is, is uh, will I ever be able to make them think differently? And I don't know that that's a possibility, you know? It's no, just... because that's who you were with them. And that's like, that's branded mm-hmm. in my mind. So no, they will never look at you. I don't, I don't think they'll ever look at you differently now. What do you think went wrong? It's very close to other questions that are in there. That one could be skipped, I think. Um, or yeah, you because, could use that in place of other ones. Well, you'd ask me about like the date when I knew. So I'm going to tell you kind of what went wrong on that date. Okay, that's fair enough. You, you'd already answered that question yeah. in this. All right, as we continue with the questions so blend of, an, those two together. of an exit interview uh, of a relationship, this one I feel you only need to ask if you have very strong suspicions or proof. Were you ever unfaithful? Because oh, I yeah, but that question comes up every time. Yeah, really though, but yes. because like I can tell you, there are people I know from my past I was with. Never. I know for a fact, either I had a ability to pick very loyal people to a relationship that I either screwed up or we screwed up together, but I never had the worry of unfaithfulness. Does that make sense? Uh, then I feel like it's a rarity because then it, it like say, it's, especially if it's a surprise, then I'm definitely going to go, was there somebody else? Okay. I, I could see that. I can understand that. Okay. All right. Here's another one for you. Do you think I was unfaithful? Vice versa. Spin it around. No, I'm never. Really I'm never going to make me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> do you th- do you think we both contributed to this ending? That's tough because a lot of times an ending is not mutual. An ending is someone ending it and the other person being stuck, going, "What the f just happened?" Right, which is again probably not going to ask that question because in my mind, not that I'm saying that you never did anything wrong, but I'm not going to pin it back on me. I'm not going to go will tell me all the bad things I did. And then it causes another fight. It's like, no, let's, this is a bandaid. We're, we're cutting this off. As you can see, Allie's working on self-improvement post relationship. Uh, I'm friends with most of my exes. What do you think are your best one? What do you think are your best qualities? Would you ask that to a per, to the person you just broke up with or are break in the midst of breaking up? No, this is really getting to be a long exit interview. I'm not going to lie. This is now getting. You don't to have the, to use all these questions. This is getting to the point where it's like, okay, we're back in a relationship. Yeah, we're <laughs> done. We've we've hashed these things out. Like, you know, and plus, if I if we talk and start talking about the good things, then I'm almost manipulated to come back, and I don't want to come back. Like, so I, you you wouldn't answer that question if that was asked of you. What are my best qualities? You would not answer that. No. Okay. How would you answer? It doesn't matter anymore. Okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. Let's get, see, we're back to the bad point. All right. No, I'm just saying that this relationship is over, so it doesn't matter. But don't aren't my qualities worth something beyond the relationship? What are not my, really? I mean, uh, wow! <laughs> Why is this really starting to? <laughs> wow! Don't care. <laughs> do you think uh, we are different people than we were when we first met? Oh, I do love this question, and the answer is always yes, though. Because you think you improved me, and that's how I would oh, respond to you. No, I but you didn't. I wouldn't even say that, but I probably did. Um, I wouldn't even say that. I just think that we're different people no matter what. We've learned different lessons. I actually broke up with somebody once or tried to. And I said, you know, here I started out with, I gave him the, I gave him the good sandwich. Like, hey, you <laughs> helped me to da 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 da. I'm breaking up with you. You know, I still, I still care about you as a person. You know, I gave him the sandwich. And Maybe you didn't give him the sandwich enough. And that's why he broke up with you. No, what uh, happened was I was trying to break up with him oh, oh, oh. and he wouldn't accept it and he wouldn't leave. I'm like, oh. oh, and then he stayed in my life way longer than he should have. I'm going to move to a couple questions that are ones that you can simply yes or no. Do you think you're going to get an honest answer? Okay. Uh, if this was asked, how would you describe our breakup to friends? Do you think you're ever going to get an honest answer? Do you think no. the person... It's no. always going to be my side. Yeah, well, that's right, because you're going to only tell your side. I right. don't care what anybody else ever says. Right. Do and you, my friends, by the way, have already formulated their opinion about you, so... Do you think uh, we should distance ourselves for a while? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you ever trash talk... Because then we're going to sleep together again, and we don't need to do that, because then that complicates things way too much. Again, because, yes uh, yes or no. Did oh you ever God. trash talk <laughs> me to your friends? Always. <laughs> Oh, uh, do you, I should roll back to the other question. When do you feel this relationship was over? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, will you, this question I hate. Will you be okay with me moving on? 
Actually, you're probably hoping I do. Yeah, I mean, I have to be okay with that. What do you think you brought to the relationship? Now you get everything. to open up and tell me all everything. your greatness. <laughs> yeah, everything. That's right. Yeah. Do you wish we never met? Oh, n- no. That is that is something that even the person I hate the most in this world and this life, because he treated me a certain way, I don't regret it. He brought one really good thing into my life. Okay. I, I understand that. Are you happy? You may not be right at the breakup right, point. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, let's not let's not even ask Whichever that either side does it, nobody I think is really happy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't love this one. Are you seeing anyone? I don't love that because then that implies you've been talking to someone before this got to the ending. And I think that's better off left alone. I've already answered that I didn't cheat on you. And if we're breaking up, does it really matter? How are we going to handle our mutual friends? That is a conversation you should oh, have. Oh, that's a big conversation. Yeah. Yeah, you Ooh. don't have to answer it. I'm just saying that's one to keep Luckily, in mind. Luckily, this has not really ever happened to me. It kind of made, I, I think they migrate where they should. Okay, that's a fair answer. Like, I've had some, I've had two friends that I'm like, I still see them once in a blue. And I'm like, oh, hey, how are you? But in all reality, they took, they went on his side. And I was like, I don't get that. Oh, well, you know, it, it, it's a... If I you... actually confronted a friend, too. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. And I said, why are you friends with him? Here's why. And he was like, we just don't talk about it. Okay, well, that oh, that oh that's honest. That, and that's okay if you're not... If you're dwelling on it... I think the women... And I'm sorry, this is not a sexist comment. comment. Women, I think, dwell more than men when it comes to that. Guys mm. suddenly go back to bro land in a lot of times. Mm. Not right away. I mean, I'm telling you... Now, I'm telling you as a guy, I know this. After... After the first initial shock, unless there's something going on that is causing the, the you know the, you and the ex to stay together, guys, a lot of times just we we go on to other things. Especially if the ex guy meets another girl, then the friend that was friend with you and friend with him, well, he's now invested in their life, so they're not talking about you. I sorry to let you down. I don't agree with this one. I, I know I'm right. I know, I know that I can rip things off like a Band-Aid way easier than Scott Free. Um, no, if, if it's something go again, you're a dweller. I'm, I'm gonna no, I'm gonna stress on this. If there is something going on that maintains me to have focus in what, that that person from the past, that's a different story. Uh, if it is just somebody you've been going with for a you know maybe even a oh. year and you break up. No, we're 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 going well, to Broland. That's different, but I, oh, these exit interviews are meant for like serious relationships. Well, a year could be a serious relationship. Well, yes, but yeah. I'm saying uh, if it's like a year plus, like I'm thinking of relationships that I've been in with somebody where I've either lived with them or we've been together like two, three, four years. Mm-hmm. Like that. That's where I'm putting the exit interview. Not like, oh, hey, we were there together for a year. Bye. Well, you could do it in a year. All right, here we go. I'll give you a couple more really quick. Moving forward, do you want to keep in touch? I actually have an answer for this. I used to always want to keep in touch. I loved keeping in touch. But is this a question you'd feel like asking? Remember, those are what we're answering. Is this something right, you... Right, but I, I'm going to omit this from the exit interview now. It, it, there's no reason for me to keep in touch with them. If it turns out the question is asked to me, my answer will be not right now. I think it should be never. Like Maybe. No- I'm just saying not right now, yeah. and maybe that will turn into uh, never. I think this is the last one that I have. with it. This is the last one. Okay. Is there anything you want to ask me? I would love to be able to have the opportunity to ask that question, and vice versa, have it asked of me. Why? What? Because... Go you've already gone dwelling. you've already gone through a number of answers where you feel you've done nothing wrong in the relationship and i this is my final catch-all to be able to go all right these are things you so know basically you're not you're not wanting a final question you're wanting a final statement you want this to be like a trial where you're like my closing remarks are um that's what it sounds like well when you ask the question is there anything you want to ask me you know, uh, something will come into your head and it will be something of, it might actually relate back to one of the questions that you didn't ask in the interview, if that makes any sense. It's something that you obviously want to ask to basically get your closing remarks out is how I'm hearing it. But it's not a specific. So it's like, if you and I were breaking up, you're going to have to make something up here. And I I go to you, Allie, Mm -hmm. is there anything you want to ask me? 
Yes. Okay. Did you did you make out with a stripper <laughs> on your bro vacation in 2022 in Vegas? Yes, and it was a guy. <laughs> 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 so it's got to throw them off, you know. No, it really wasn't. That's what I'm saying. You ask a question, then it opens up. It basically sounds like you're wanting to make a final, a final bow. Uh, who, me or yeah, you? You. It sounds like that's why you're well, wanting. To... No, I mean, it, I guess it depends. And you of course, have... everybody wants to say their last words, but in all reality. Well, does it matter? It Exactly. I mean, unless you're going to be connected with a person Look, if there's kids involved, if there's things that you will, you know, you are going to remain in a very specific amount of contact, you might want some of these answers. No, because I think that's going to make it, it's going to muddy it. Because if there's kids involved, every time you see them, you're going to think about how they made out with that stripper in Vegas in 2022. And it was a guy (gasps) for me. And I didn't know it really looked like a chick. Or the questions of like, oh, did you cheat on me or whatever, whatever, or what are my worst qualities or all those things. Every time you see them, you're going to think of all those answers that came at you. Well, the exit interview, as much as I would love to have it, it really doesn't matter anymore. So you've now changed. You have changed your opinion. You wanted this. I think it was a podcast. I mean, you wanted this like nobody's business. It was a podcast that Quinn was still here for. Both of us it said was no. It was a podcast that never aired, remember? Okay, good. I now know <laughs> it was a podcast that never aired. But here's the thing about it is we both said, no, we didn't want it. You wanted it. Then I go through and I find actual questions for an exit interview. Now, again, you're not going to use all of them. You have to pick and choose a couple of the tailor-made ones that that fit. If you know there was no cheating, why would you use it? Right. But then you say, I know there was no cheating, but then you ask the question and then they go, well, okay. Don't ask the I question. Did. Then they'll say something like, oh, well, when we first got together, there was some overlapping. And then all of a sudden... Every single time you see them, you're thinking of that. I'm not worried about overlapping in the beginning. Okay, Mm -hmm. let me just tell you something about a relationship. In the very beginning, if it's the first month or so and you are not with that person like instantly, regularly, Mm -hmm. and you're exclusively to, you know, with each other and you know there's no one else, if there is a bit of a transition period, well, you know, and you usually are honest, well, I'm kind of seeing this person. I don't know if it's going to work out, you know, whatever. Oh, I. I'm not worried about that. But if it's a year and a half into the relationship and there was somebody else, that's a different story. That's when you when you have that feeling and you ask the question. But if you know the person well enough to know, I know there wasn't. I think your heart is never going to have enough armor and is not going to be able to be protected enough for the answers that you're going to get. Oh, you I'm want prepared honest. to live a, a life of a pure candor at this point. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I don't think that it's really going to change anything because you acted also a certain way with this person. I know, like I said, a leopard doesn't change his spots, but you do. Like, I acted a certain way with an ex that is not me. That is not who I was as a person. Right, right. And so, I I mean, I was underneath there. I was. But there were, yeah, there were situations I was like, I don't yell like this. And all of a sudden I'm yelling. You, you, you have to realize something. The, the, the expression, a leopard doesn't change his spots, is a great one to go along with the old line. Once a cheater, always a cheater. That sort of a situation. Yeah. Um, because some people do it because it's the thrill of it, the exhilaration. You're never going to get that out of them. And, and if you discover that, you need to go. There are situations that bring things out of people and either it's not necessarily you or you have to look at it and go, the circumstances that created the person that you became. So it's not so much that a leopard doesn't change his spots. It's what was the situation where, I mean, yes, there are times that expression works, but it could be a situation. What brought on me being the way I was or you being the way you were or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And that's something that also has to be looked at because sometimes it's not even your fault. Sometimes it's your reaction to whatever the situation could be or, or string of them or, or history. And that is something that that's difficult to, it takes a while in life to realize that I think. Yes. uh, But then, then that person can also say, well, You did this, so then I reacted this way. And then you reacted this way, so then I reacted that way. It's a chain reaction. So, yes, I know that there are certain things that happened in this relationship that changed me as a person to a Mm -hmm. certain degree. And I even went into this relationship, and my best friend noticed 
different behaviors. And he's like, this is going to change you as a person. And I said, no, it's not. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. And it definitely did. Luckily I got out and then I was like, Oh my God, I found myself again. I was so happy. You just described what I was trying to say, and, actually. Oh, well then, you know, get to the point. Scott. Well, that's really what I was trying <laughs> to say. But there were situations in that relationship that made something come out of you or you became something that you were not. Yes, yes. I think that it can happen for sure. But at the same time, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go back and revisit that anymore. Like it's done and it's done. So oh, sure. Well, you're not going to do this exit interview that I was giving you questions for three years afterwards. It would have been like, we broke up. I'm coming to get my stuff. Let's sit down for 10 minutes. I'm going to give you a few questions. Like, pick three of them. It's too fresh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no. I don't. I think it's too fresh. And then once, like you were saying, it, you know, even a year or two later, then then we moved on. There's really oh, you're no, done. Yeah. There's, right. There's no sweet spot for the exit interview. It just shouldn't happen. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, that's all I have. I mean, that's it, a lot. That was a lot. And there were a lot of questions in there, but you know, I, right. <laughs> all those questions for us to come to the answer of, well, I don't want to ask them. Sh it shouldn't be done. I don't it feel like it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't need you. Okay. So next week we're going to have to move. You had something for next week. Uh, I'll tell you what I have for next week. Hang okay, on. good. I, uh, let's see. Give me uh, the pitch. This deals with a honeymoon and mm -hmm. equipment that comes along with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, champagne glass hot tub, Poconos, I'm back on it. It's none of those, but you'll love the question. And I, I'm dying to hear your answer because uh, in today's world, I don't know how you're going to go without it. Well, I guess you'll have to wait till next week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See ya. Bye.